What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another highly combustible reaction. We're jumping into the next one on our geography now journey. Iceland, here we come. Let's jump in and let's check it out together. You guys wanted it. I'm totally here with it. If you enjoy it, get over and show the best ever geography now. All the love in the world. You already know we're subbed up. We already smashed the like button. The link's right there in the description. You name it hard for you to find if you wish to watch it on your own. Let's go for a journey. Guys, as you know, I went to Iceland earlier this year. And in all honesty, if you just want to get a real taste of Iceland better than I could ever provide, check out my friend, this guy, Auskir. Subscribe to his channel. He helped me out when I was there. And he knows Iceland. Auskir, check out the Aus. Yeah, keep that one, bro. All for you. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good lingo. Geography. Now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So full disclosure before we start, my pronunciation for Icelandic words is gonna suck so bad in this episode. I do not advise you to play a drinking game for every time I mispronounce something. You will get alcohol poisoning and you might die. I repeat, you could die watching this. That's the greatest. Iceland! Just the name invokes an obvious clue about where it is geographically. First of all, the country is located at the confluence of the Atlantic and Arctic Oceans east of Greenland. It's located in a place with ice, and just I'm south assuming. Of the, Arctic Circle. the country is divided into six constituencies, three big ones, and three of which are confusing because they basically just split up the most populous areas in the west. Reykjavik is the capital and the northernmost capital in the world, which is split into two constituencies, north and south, whereas the southwest constituency is divided into four non-contiguous exclaves, but they still act as one constituency not four so it's six small separate entities that act as three constituencies get it <laughs> no great no. this was done to help with the imbalance of the no. populated outer regions with voting since about a third of the entire country is located in the Reykjavik metropolitan area nonetheless most of the country still refers to areas being located in the traditional eight region zones which are divided like this the country has many domestic airports but the one large scale international airport is Keflavik International and the next two busiest ones are Reykjavik and Akureyri Reykjavik and Akureyri are domestic airports except for seasonal service to Greenland internationally Iceland's domain is mostly encompassed around the main island However, they do own some smaller islands and archipelagos off their coasts. The most populated ones being Heime, Hrise, and Grimse, and some in the south, like the newest island that just popped up in the 60s, Surtse, which is off limits to anyone except permitted scientists who study it. Otherwise, Iceland may be rugged, but the islanders sure have paved a way. Yeah, I don't think I want to be one of the first explorers of a brand new uh, volcanic island. No Wait thanks. Let the scientists do that. See it all. The Ring Road. This guy takes you all around the entire country, and depending on how much time you want to stop and see the sites, it could take you anywhere between four-ish to seven days to complete. Hey, Brandon, you went on the Ring Road, right? Yeah! How long did it take you? Uh, about nine days. Okay, uh, maybe my facts were wrong. Otherwise, some top notable man-made sites and landmarks. Maybe he just made a couple stops. Might include the National Gallery, the Viking World Museum, the stone carvings of Paul Guzmanson, the U.S. Navy D3 plane wreckage site, the Drink. Hit Viking Village, Drink the Sea Monster no, Museum, no. pretty much all of Akureyri, the Whale Museum, the Design Center, all over the countryside you can find turf houses with grass on their roofs, the country's I that's awesome. I want to live in a little hut house with grass on my roof. Iconic too. landmark. That's fairy tale as hell. Carefully constructed icicle shaped church. Now, as interesting as those man made sites and landmarks may be, they pale in comparison to what the actual land has to offer. Let's jump into I'm the met. fire and ice. Dun, dun, dun. All right, let me just put it this way. Iceland doesn't need an amusement park or roller coasters because the entire island is just like a wonderland in itself. First of all, Iceland is the 18th largest island in the world and the second largest in all of Europe. The entire country lies transected on the Mid-Atlantic Range, which divides the North American tectonic plate with the Eurasian plate, splitting open about two centimeters every year. You can even see the divide for yourself with your own eyes. Nearby Reykjavik at Thing... With the <laughs> largest natural lake... I love you. The land splits open and you can literally walk from Eurasia to North America. Underneath the waters, you can get even closer to the divide at the Silfra, whew, that was easy, known as the clearest water diving spot in the world where visibility can go up to 100 meters. Over 80% of the country is mountainous with the top. That's, that's discombobulating when water is that clear. Scuba divers know sometimes that water is so clear that it's like, whoa, where the hell am I? I don't know, it makes you a little bit off. It's because the distance that you're able to see is ridiculous. It does something to your brain when water is that clear. Tallest point, Kvandalsnukur. 11% of the country is covered with six main glaciers, the largest one in the southeast, Vatnajökull, and the smallest one, which just erupted in 2010, Eyjafjallajökull. Look at these words. I can't, I'm not even surprised that it's hard to pronounce. Legitimately. That's like the whole alphabet. 
Good. Alphabet Mountain. With hundreds of volcanoes and about 30 of them are consistently active as the longest river, the Fjordsau, meanders through the deep central Hofskuller Glacier to the ocean. <gasps> so basically the entire island oh, is indeed. geothermal. Everywhere you go, chances are- That's so every single word is a mouthful. You can probably find a natural hot spring hidden somewhere in the remote wilderness. Not only that, but Iceland also harbors and capitalizes off of this unique valuable resource as much as possible. When the first Vikings came in, they were like, Wow, it is cold in here. I mean, I knew Norway was chilly, but dang! Is there anything here we can use to not, like, freeze to death? Hmm. Yeah, they killed work. a lot of sheep and made more wool clothing, but then eventually they found out how to generate power with the hot springs. Geothermal energy provides about a quarter of the country's power alone, and the rest is mostly hydroelectric from dams and renewable sources. Nonetheless, only about 1% of their land is arable, mostly confined to the south peripheral lowlands where root vegetables and kale and cabbage and cauliflower are grown, alongside numerous geothermal heated greenhouses that harvest warm climate produce like tomatoes, cucumbers, and yes, even bananas, making Iceland the northernmost banana-producing wow. country in the world. World. Of course, the country also hosts a unique variety of Arctic wildlife like puffins, foxes, seals, narwhals, and the narwhals. Unicorns of the sea. Also hosts a unique variety of Arctic wildlife like puffins, foxes, seals, narwhals. Look at that thing. That's a straight up unicorn. I love narwhals. I thought they were mythical creatures until I was like 18 years old. The national animals, the griff falcon, and the famous highly accredited Icelandic horses. By the way, yes, it's true. Iceland is the only country with no mosquitoes. However, they do have two species of midges. <laughs> He said midges. Midge What's a midges? Is, which are similar to mosquitoes. And actually, one of the species does actually bite, so it's kind of like having mosquitoes anyway. <laughs> Iceland has biting midges. Keith, just... <laughs> Speaking of which, traditional you, Icelandic food is... Let's just say even my Icelandic friend said this. This is so disgusting. Listen to Why flavor. would anyone eat this? Yeah, let's just say the Vikings had some very unorthodox tactics when it came to food preservation. Oh, Dishes I don't like sheep's head, stockfish jerky, head cheese, sheep testicles. No. No, there's a whole lot of no on this list, and I'm a meat eater. Dishes like sheep's head, stockfish jerky, head cheese, sheep testicles, and the famous haukach. <laughs> what is it exactly? Well, let's just say... Hey, so I uh, got the shark, but it's poisonous. Uh, how do I eat it? Hmm. Oh, I know. Let's bury it into the ground until it smells like urine, then dry it out for a couple months, and then cut off the brown crust, and then serve it. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> jump, 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 jump. There are some delicious redeeming Icelandic foods. Oh, yeah, that looks more down my alley. Lambs, served with bean salad and grilled haddock and herring dishes. You can literally drink almost any water from any stream, pond, or lake, or river in Iceland. The whole island kind of acts like a filtration device for the glaciers. It's a giant fresh water hole. You have places like the smooth conical Kirkjufell Mountain. Brandon has a tattoo of that. The Skaftafet Crystal Ice Cave in Vatnajökull. That's gorgeous. The Kjolur Trail in the Highlands. Literally like every five kilometers you'll find a waterfall. And don't forget the geysers in can we just can we can we say something in the real highlands, quick? That doesn't look like the last Halo map. Look at even the little octagons. Come on, this is a different kind of place right here. This is where this is where some real magical creatures come from. Have to be. There's probably a little area set up for them. Nobody goes there. Look at this. This is straight up out of a fairy tale book or Halo. Like every five kilometers, you'll find a waterfall. And don't forget the geysers in the south. Pretty much all of the West Fjords region is empty and beautiful for you to explore with no tourists. The sea monster of Kvitsurkur, Dragni Island, Griotkjal Caves, Mayfell Green Volcano on Black Sand Beaches, Krafla, and that's a beautiful volcano. I would actually want to go there. Caves, Look at these May damn caves. Everything is gorgeous. Everything is like so picturesque. I will just go out into the wilderness, I think. I will get out of the city. Let me go live out in the middle of nowhere. Fell green volcano on black sand beaches, Krafla and Naumskarth, Drangsnes hot tubs, the largest hot spring, Kunukver, and the open exposed fossils of... Yeah, good luck with this one. Hot tubs, the largest hot spring, Kunukver, and the open exposed no. fossils of... If you went against my disclaimer and played that drinking game, you you're probably dead by now. You should be in an ambulance by now. <laughs> Speaking of drinking, Icelanders are awesome people to socialize with. Let's meet them, shall we? 
Now, if the Nordics were a family, Iceland would be like the little brother that got lost at sea from a shipwreck, got stranded on an island, and became a wild man. First of all, Iceland has a population of about 335,000 people and is the most sparsely populated country in Europe. About 92% of the country identifies as ethnically Icelandic, about 4% are Polish, and the remainder are other immigrants from all over, mostly Nordic, West European, and a few Asians mixed in as well. They also use the Icelandic kroner as their currency, they use the Type-C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, being Icelandic is actually very unique genetically in contrast to the rest of their Nordic cousins. Basically, way back yeehaw, the Vikings were like, Hey, we're sick of Norway. Let's make a new home. Oh, but wait. We need women. But most of the Norwegian women were like, uh -uh. So they made a quick stop to the British Isles and kidnapped a bunch of Irish and Celtic women and brought them over. About 70% of all their women, that is. To this day, a typical ice To kidnap 70% of all their women? Slander actually has a portion of Irish or Celtic roots in their blood. Now, obviously, if you are- Obviously not anymore. This happened a long time ago. One of the few lucky people that hasn't ended up in an ambulance yet, you'll have noticed that the Icelandic language is incredibly unique, often touted as one of the hardest languages in the world to learn. I mean, half the time, the letters make no sense. F can make a V or a P sound, sometimes P and a T make a F sound, sometimes the G makes a W sound, these two letters both make a TH sound, and sometimes when there's two L's it makes like a <laughs> sound. Most Nordic peoples have a hard time cracking the Icelandic code, except for the Faroese people on the Faroe Islands. They seem to have a similar sense of pronunciation and grammar as the Icelanders. Icelandic and Faroese are the closest languages to ancient Norse out of all the Nordic languages. If you give them a script written in ancient Norse, chances are they could probably understand it. Whereas Norwegians, Swedes, and Danes are like, ha! Nope. Now, because of its small population, nope. Icelandic culture is very communal. Chances are everybody either knows each other or they know somebody who knows another person. Therefore, an ingrained sense of trust kind of roots itself in the mindsets of most people. This is why Iceland has one of the lowest crime rates in the entire world, sometimes topping off at number one. And also, as of 2014, they were elected the world's most peaceful country, according to the Global Peace Index. Oh, and by the way, I don't know what I would do living in a country that peaceful. In Iceland, nobody technically has a surname. They just adopt the last so name weird. dependent on their father's first name, and they just add son or daughter after it. So for example, a man named Alex with a father named, I don't know, Bjarki, would be named Alex Bjarkison. Or if it was a woman, her last name would be Bjarki Dotter. Sorry, Bjarki, you just popped in my head. You rock, man. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Icelanders are thrill seekers. They live in an extreme landscape, so they make the best of it, and they will ski, paraglide, rappel, skate, dive, jump, and experience anything that gives them adrenaline. Some of the top notable Icelandic people might include founders of Iceland, Ingolfur Arnarsson and his wife, Hedvig and brother, Kjörlif, Leif Eric, the first president, Svein Björnsson, musicians, Sigur Ross of Monsters and Men, Emiliana Torini, Moom, Goose Goose, of course, the most famous resident, Björk, Oscar nominated director, Björk doesn't like us, Friedrich Thor Friedrichsen, Hat Thor Laxness, handball superstar, Olafur Stefansson, Magnus Uren Schiving, Fian Paul, and of course, everyone's favorite strongman, Hap Thor or Thor the Mountain, Julius Björnsson. Now, as small as Iceland is, they've made a huge impact in the world's media outlets. Somewhere in the late 90s and early early 2000s, word spread fast, and to this day, tourism is almost getting out of hand as they get over three times their own population in tourism. Three times the population. Hotels need to be built, staff need to be hired, and diplomacy is key in operating the whole deal. Which brings us to... Dun, dun, dun. Now, Iceland has a problem. A good problem. Too many people like him now, and it's all happening too fast. First of all, Iceland has always had good ties to the USA and Canada. The US was the first to recognize Iceland as a state after independence, and both countries not only give some of the biggest business, but also house the largest communities of Icelanders outside of Iceland. Finland is like the mysterious, cool new rebel friend that they just made. They enjoy both being outsiders because although they are both Nordic, they are not considered Scandinavian. When it comes to humor, they totally get each other and click instantly with dry, semi-dark undertone jokes. Sweden is like the old. <laughs> older brother that they love but is too busy working on his flow charts to hang Those out my with. Kind Denmark of jokes. is close, although Danes practically have no idea what skiing is considering their flat landscape. Most Icelanders learn Danish in school first before they learn English, even though they think it's pretty useless. When it comes to their best friends, most Icelanders I've talked to have said Norway and the Faroe Islands. As mentioned before, Icelanders have historical roots to Norway and the two have had very close relations, especially since they both can relate to being subjugated under the Danes at one point in time. The Faroe Islands are like their weird cousins that totally get them and love Love to hang out with. It's a magical moment when an Icelander meets a Faroese person. In conclusion, Iceland is a land where cold meets hot, old meets new, small yet big, horrible fermented shark meets your dinner plate. I hope you're no. still alive and if you are, stay tuned because the big guy, India, is coming up next. Hey, there you have it everybody. If you enjoyed it, get over and show geography now all the love in the world. Shout out to all my folks from Iceland. It definitely looks like a 
fairy tale esque place. Like it jumped right out of a damn fairy tale book. When you think of fairy tales, that's the kind of nature that you see. I bet they got all kinds of magical everything. 100% a place I would love to go. Though I think the fermented shark would have to not make it sway to my dinner plate. I don't know if I'll be able to handle that. Smash the like button if you liked it. The dislike button, but I won't believe you. Get up and show geography now. All the love of the world for bringing us the greatest geography facts from around the world. Tell the next one of my think possible. You guys be happy, healthy, safe, but let me to the world with a bag of peace.